Welcome home and welcome to Sweeter Than Honey. Great to have all you guys join us here today. I wanted to share the weather with you like I always do on Tuesdays. Today's high is supposed to be 64 with a low of 39 and it's supposed to be sunny. And so it seems like we're having our true fall weather right now. And so please enjoy the foliage, please enjoy the sun, and please enjoy God's creation as we enjoy at this season and this time. So at this time, let me read our God's words for today, which comes from 1 Kings chapter 20, verse 22 to 34. 1 Kings chapter 20, verse 22 to 34. We'll read from the NIV. Please carefully follow along and hear the word of the Lord. Afterward, the prophet came to the king of Israel and said, Strengthen your position and see what must be done, because next spring the king of Aram will attack you again. Meanwhile, the officials of the king of Aram advised them, Their gods are gods of the hills. That is why they were too strong for us. But if we fight for them on the plains, surely we will be stronger than they. Do this. Remove all the kings from their commands and replace them with other officers. You must also raise an army like the one you lost, horse for horse and chariot for chariot, so we can fight Israel on the plains. Then surely we'll be stronger than they. He agreed with them and acted accordingly. The next spring, ben mustered the Armenians and went up to Afek to fight against Israel. When the Israelites were also mustered and given provisions, they marched out to meet them. The Israelites camped opposite them like two small flocks of goat, while other Armenians covered the countryside. The man of God came up and told the kings of Israel, This is what the Lord says, Because the Armenians think the Lord is a God of the hills and not a God of the valleys, I will deliver this vast army into your hands, and when you, you will know that I am the Lord. For seven days they camped opposite each other, and on the seventh day the battle was joined. The Israelites inflicted a hundred thousand casualties on the Armenian foot soldiers in one day. The rest of them escaped to the city of Afek, where the wall collapsed on twenty-seven thousand of them, and ben fled to the city and hid in a room. His official said to him, Look, we have heard the kings of Israel are merciful. Let us go to the king of Israel with sackcloth around our waist and ropes around their heads. Perhaps he will spare your life. Wearing sackcloth around their waist and ropes around their heads, they went to the king of Israel and said, Your servant ben says, Please let me live. The king answered, Is he still alive? He is my brother. Then the men, the men took this as a good sign and were quick to pick up his sword. Yes, your brother ben they said. Go and get him. The king said, When ben came out, Ahab, Ahab had him come up, to, up into his chariot. I will return the cities my father took from your father, ben offered. You may set up your own market areas in Damascus, as my father did in Samaria. Ahab said, On the basis of a treaty, I will set you free. So he made a treaty with them and let him go. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, we have today we have this passage. Before our passage kind of continues, I want to let you know what happened so far. So King Aram, uh, King, King of Aram, uh, ben kind of rises up against Israel and takes over Samaria. And he kind of demands Israel to give him something. And so he demands gold, silver, women, children. And the first offer, uh, King Ahab is like, sure, I'll give it to you. And then the request and the demands get a lot more. And so now King Ahab doesn't want to do it anymore. And he kind of, you know, gets the people's support and they go up against them. And when they do, before this passage, they have a battle and they win. And they win and they kind of kind of show that God is on their side and God helps them to win. And and now King Aram, um, King Ben Hadad, Ben Hadad, wants to rise up again. And this time, um, when they first invaded Israel, it was a coalition of some uh, a lot of dozens of kings. And now that coalition is gone. And yet his advisors, Ben King Ben Hadad's advisors, say, you know, it's it's not you didn't lose because anything else other than you know. You were fighting in, in the hills, you know, their God is the God of the hills and not the valleys. And so King, King Benedict kind of gets this big army again and kind of is get ready to fight. But, you know, at the whole story of this is the God, God, our God is kind of telling King Ahab what to do. God is continually letting Ahab know what needs to happen. And, and, and what he does is he get his, he's told that Aram will come and invade again um, uh, this uh, year before. And so actually they, Israel has time to prepare. And what happens is they gather on, on the valley and one side is like... Uh, uh, they cover the countryside. Uh, king Aram, king of the, uh, the Armenians, cover one side, and the king of Israel, the Israelites, are kind of two flocks of goat. Like they it, kind of to show you that they have a small army, but at the end of the day, they win and they kind of come upon it and they 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 deal hundred thousand casualties on the Armenians. And the story, what we're trying to say with the story today is this: 
the Israelites, it was important that they follow the instructions of God. And what happened is when they followed the instructions of God, they were able to win. But at the end of the day, you have to see that it wasn't technically the Israelites winning. They were outnumbered. They were outclassed. And yet, they won because of God. And so even when we follow God's instructions, we're reminded every day that it is God who brings miracles. It is God who kind of gives us the power and the strength and the victories that we need. So church, my question today is, are you following God in all that you do? And are you remembering that all your success and all your victories and all the things that you hold dear to your heart, that they are from God? Because the moment that we don't, the moment that we fail to do so, that is when the glory of God departs, right? And that's when Israelites many times, when they thought that they could win, they lost. But when they relied on God, they found victory. So church... I pray that we live every day realizing that everything is from God and realizing every day that everything, that all the things that we've done is by the grace and the glory of God. And may we properly give God the credit and the glory. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for loving us. Father, we thank you that you would continue to bless us and guide us. Like today, may we follow you carefully, but also may we also realize that you are the one who gives us victory in our lives. Therefore, may we glorify and worship you properly. We thank you so much. In Jesus Christ, let me pray. Amen.